Welcome to my tutorial series on built-in functions in Python. Today we are going to look 9 different built-in functions in Python. Actually, my aim was to make a tutorial on ASCII function. But for the better understanding of ASCII function, we need to understand few other built-in functions. So I have made this video on 9 different built-in functions which are somehow related or similar to each other. Let's start first with string function. String function is one of the simplest function in Python. String function is used to convert any other object like integer, float, date, time, etc. to a string object. In Python 2.7, string function takes only one argument, and which is optional. So if we call string function without any object, string function returns an empty string. If we call string function with an object, which is also a string, then the output of string function is also a string. Let's call string function with an integer object and assign the return value of string function to a. Now we print the type of object A. As you can see, object A is now an instance of class string. In case if you try to add an integer to object A, it will give you a type error. So in nutshell, string function converts any other object to a string object. Now let's move to Python 3. In Python 3.5, we have two variations of string function. In Python 3, a string is now a sequence of immutable Unicode characters rather than a sequence of immutable bytes. So in nutshell, the Unicode string class from Python 2 is string class in Python 3, and the string class from Python 2 is now bytes class in Python 3. Python 3 has also byte array class, which is a sequence of mutable bytes. If it sounds confusing, please check my other tutorial on immutable and mutable objects in Python and difference between string in Python 2 and Python 3. The string function with single argument behave exactly like string function what we have seen in Python 2.7. The difference lies only in the return value, which is now Unicode string in Python 3 and not a byte string as in Python 2. Now let's see the next string function which takes up the three arguments. Here the first argument must be of type bytes or byte array. The second argument encoding defines how the bytes or byte array will be decoded. As you can see, it has default value of UTF-8. Other possible values are Latin 1, UTF-16, UTF-32, etc. The last argument errors define the error handling and it has default value of strict. Other possible values are ignore, replace, etc. Let's see an example. Here we have object B which contains sequence of bytes and they are encoded in Latin 1. Now I pass object B as first argument of string function. The second argument must be Latin 1. The last argument strict literally means throw an exception if any decoding error occurs. In our first example, we get no error and the output is Unicode string cliche. Now let's change the encoding argument to UTF-8. As you can see, string function throws an error because we have chosen the wrong encoding UTF-8 instead of Latin 1. Now let's change the argument errors to ignore, which literally means ignore all decoding errors. Now our string function ignores all the bytes which it cannot decode. So in this case we get no errors but the wrong output. Now let's move to our next built-in functions, globals, locals and where's. A Python program has various namespaces. Suppose you define a variable a in the main and another variable a in a function. So the variable a in the main is a global variable and variable a in the function is a local variable. Keep in mind, in Python the variables are actually object references. So the built-in function globals return all the variables from global namespace in a dictionary, whereas built-in function locals return all the variables from current namespace in a dictionary. Let's see an example. Here I define two objects a and s of type integer and string in my main. Now I call function globals in my main. As you can see, built-in function globals return all the user defined as well as all hidden variables from global namespace. The built-in function locals does the same thing as globals, but it returns all the variable from local namespace in a dictionary. Let's see an example. In this example, I define two global variables a and c. In my function myfunc, I have three local variables a, b, and c. Now I call both globals and locals function in my function myfunc. As you can see, 
the function globals returns all the global variables whereas function locals returns only the variable a b and c from current namespace the where's function is very similar to locals but it takes an optional argument if you call where's without an argument it is exactly same as locals now if you pass an object as an argument the where's function returns a dictionary corresponding to the local namespace of pass object as you can see in this example now let's move to next built-in function eval. Eval function takes three arguments, whereas the first argument must be an expression string. An expression in Python is a section of code that evaluates to a value, like 2 plus 3. In Python a function is also an expression. The next two arguments globals and locals are dictionaries and they are optional. Let's see some example and try to understand eval function. In our first example we have string expression, in which we multiply 2 with 4. So we get 8 as output. In our next example, we compare two integers. The eval function evaluates the expression string and returns a boolean value true. In our next example, I define a function my function, which takes a single argument. In my function, I multiply the argument with integer 2 and returns the value. Now in main, I pass my function as a string expression in eval function. As you can see, eval function returns 4. In case, if you try to evaluate a statement which is not a Python expression or you pass an undefined variable, as you can see in example, this will result either in name or syntax error. Now I want to point a little difference between eval function in Python 2 and in Python 3. This is because in Python 2, print is a statement, whereas in Python 3, print is a function. So in Python 2, you cannot pass print in eval function as a string expression. Now let's see the next two arguments, globals and locals. If you still remember the last slide, globals and locals are namespaces. You can either pass your own namespace dictionary or you can pass built-in globals and locals functions as arguments. Let's see an example. In this example, I have two global variables a and b. Now I define a function myfunc1 and inside my function, I declare a new local variable a, which is equal to 10. Now in my function myfunc1, I call eval function where I pass variable a as a string expression. Similarly, I define a new function myfunc2 and call eval function and pass variable b as a string expression. Now in main, I call both myfunc1 and myfunc2. As you can see, myfunc1 returns 10. This is because string expression in myfunc1 refers to variable in local namespace, which is 10, whereas in function myfunc2, there is no local variable b. So in this case, I get global variable b as output. Now I call eval function in my main. In this case, eval function refers to global namespace and I get a equal to 1 as output. Now what if I want that the variable a passed as a string expression in eval function in my local function myfunc1 is from global namespace. For that, I can pass built-in function globals as an argument in eval function. Similarly, I can even overwrite the built-in functions locals and globals and define my own locals and global dictionaries. So globals and locals are very useful arguments in eval function. For example, if you still want to assess data from calling environment but want to overwrite particular variables, you can declare your own globals and locals. Now let's move to next built-in function exec. Like print which is a statement in Python 2 but a function in Python 3, exec is also a statement in Python 2 but a built-in function in Python 3. In a nutshell, a function in Python always requires parentheses. So there's hardly any difference between exe statement in Python 2 and exe function in Python 3. The exe function is very similar to eval function which we have seen in last slide. The main difference between both eval and exe lies in the return value. The return value of exec function is always known, which is an another object type in Python. The other main difference between exec and eval is that exec can not only execute expressions but also more powerful statement, as you can see in examples. In this example, I have string variable s, which is equal to a for loop and a print statement. Now I pass the variable s as an argument of exec function. As you can see, the exec function executes the string as if it was statement and not a string. I can even pass string statement directly as an argument. 
The globus and locus argument have same behavior as the globus and locus what we have seen in eval function. The next built-in function exec file exists only in Python 2. exec file is very similar to exec function except it takes file as an argument. It reads the content of that file and execute. The globals and locus arguments have same behavior as in eval and exe functions. Now let's move to next built-in function. If you have understood the string and eval functions, then it's very easy to understand the next repr function. Repr function is very similar to string function, but used mainly by developers for debugging. Like string function, repr function also converts any object pass as an argument to a string object. But the goal of repr function is to return complete and unambiguous string representation of object passed as an argument. Whereas the goal of string function is to give nicely formatted string suited for printing. So in other words, repr function tries to convert everything into a string that can be used with eval function to regenerate the original object. We can also say that repr function generates a computer friendly output, whereas string function generates human friendly output and its output may or may not be used with eval function. Let's see some examples and try to understand repr function by comparing it with string function. In our first example, I pass a hello string object as an argument in my string function. As you can see, I get again string hello as output. But when I pass same hello string object as an argument in rpr function, I also get string hello as output. But repr function creates single quotes around the output. So I can directly pass the output of repr function in eval function to regenerate the original object. But when I try to pass the output of string function as an argument in eval function, as you can see, I get an error. So the goal of string function is to give nicely formatted string suited for printing and its output is mostly not suitable for eval function. Now let's see in another example. Here I pass hello world string object which has a new line character in it, in both rpr and string functions. Now if I compare the output of both string and rpr function, string function adds a new line between hello and word and the output of string function is more human readable as compared to rpr function which doesn't convert the new line character to a new line. So again, rpr function tries to convert everything into string that can be used in eval function to regenerate the original object and used mainly by developers for debugging. But in many cases, the output of string and rpr function are same. For example, if I pass an integer object as an argument in both string and rpr functions, I get same output. Now let's try an another example. Here I first import daytime module. In second line, I get the current date and time by calling daytime now function from daytime module. In next two lines, I print daytime object and its class. Now I pass the daytime object as an argument in both string and in rpr functions. As you can see, the string function changes the daytime object to string object. Whereas repr function also converts the daytime object to string object, but it has more computer readable form compared to string function. Now if I pass the output of repr function as an argument in eval function, the eval function returns the original daytime object. I hope now you can understand the repr function. Now let's move to our last built-in function ASCII. ASCII function is very similar to repr function and it is only available in Python 2. Like repr function, ASCII function returns a string object as output but escapes the known ASCII characters, as you can see in this example. I hope now you understand all the functions we have discussed in this tutorial. Thank you for watching and please subscribe my channel for further videos.